Welcome to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. Did you guys uh, uh, hear about the shooting at the supermarket in I did. Buffalo? No. And uh, so this guy drove like a couple of hours from his home to target a black neighborhood. Golly. And there was, they found a manifesto on his computer. An article that I was reading earlier was just saying that, uh, uh, I mean, this was a while back. This was in May. But mm-hmm. uh, the guy was, they said, we can't keep calling these guys lone wolves. Because mm. even though he acted on his own, in his mind, he's part of a movement. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he's reading these other people who are, like, in his mind, he's not a lone wolf. In his yeah. mind, he's... He has a cause, you know, and it was just talking about how this guy wrote kind of this whole deal that for whoever would find it, which I'm hoping that they'll obviously they'll delete it all from the internet and pull it all down as much as they can, but it's mm-hmm. out there. But he gives instructions to the next person to take up his cause oh. and how to do it, you know, and it's just, man, it's just like, I, I know, I know, I know that people are wicked. I mm-hmm. do know that. I know that people are wicked. I, I wonder though, how much of this kind of stuff, we talked about it with that lady dancing in front mm-hmm. of the church. And yeah. Yeah. Pretending to kill babies. Like, I really wonder how much of this is demonic. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. it seems like, like it, it seems like it has to be because there's right? so much. Okay. I'll tell you one of the things that's frustrating to me right now in our country is that we make light of one situation like this, which was a terrible situation, mm-hmm. but then they buried the dude who drove his car through the parade um. Oh yeah. Last year, yeah. they won't talk about it. You know why? Yeah. Because the guy bl- is black. Oh. Okay. Mm. This guy's white. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a cause that they're they're. I mean, this dude's off his rocker. Like right, right. Like, but the but the media is trying to spin it as if yeah, as if this is the only time this happens. Uh, yeah. There was a, a, a they're not uh, they're not giving like the families of the people in the parade should be getting just as much. Yeah. Mm. stuff on their side of things too. Yeah, yeah. Too. And yeah, there yeah. was, I don't know exactly what it was, but in California, um, around the same time as the supermarket shooting, there was a uh, an Asian dude who went into a Taiwanese, um, I think Episcopal church and and started shooting. Mm. He went to church mm. apparently in the morning and they were ha- in the morning they were having like a luncheon afterwards to celebrate this, I think pastor that was coming in that had been gone for a while. He was going to come in and take over the church. It was kind of a funny story though because he apparently started shooting um, I think one person died, but everybody that was at the lunch uh, tackled him and hogtied him with some extension cords. Wow. <laughs> wow. Gosh. <laughs> so lesson to be learned, if you're going to go shoot somewhere, it's probably not a good idea to go do it to a bunch of Asian people <laughs> having food because right. they will take you down. <laughs> Man, like. It's not funny, but I'm saying like th- that part of it was funny. Like how yeah. they handled it. It, it yeah. wasn't like yeah. 10, it wasn't like 10 people got shot and killed be- because mm-hmm. they took action really they quickly. Took, yeah. yeah, They were quick to respond. Right. Yeah. But that's also, it's funny because that also wasn't really a big story in the news around the same time. Like it's, yeah. that's. This dude that shot at the supermarket oh. off his rocker. My point is, like, it drives me nuts that that we make light of one and we don't make light of the other. Mm-hmm. Well, it's they. This Which is a, to this me is a seems, problem in our culture. That's to, sorry. All that to say, I agree with you, and I think that's yeah. part of the n- demonic influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is it's it's trying to move us to a place where we are um, in two camps. Yeah, in yeah. opposition of each other. Well, mm-hmm. it, this is this kind of violence is. A problem in our culture and the way we fix it isn't to make it a race issue the way we fix it is to or at least part of the way we fix it is to expose all these assholes mm-hmm. the, the, the evil behind all of it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. regardless of of race or yeah um socioeconomic background mm-hmm. is yeah to expose the evil of it i mean yeah, yeah. call it, evil evil I mean, yeah. like, isn't that one of the things that Jeremiah says, what are those who who call evil good and good evil, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, there's a little bit of a sense when I feel like that that's happening in our culture. I I think I'm probably at a different place than maybe a lot of people who lean, like, politically where I am. Like, I'm actually not, I'm not actually a fan of war. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, or this is going to throw a lot of people off. I'm actually, I'll tell you this, I, 
there is not a very good biblical case for the death penalty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the case that's there is just from the law. Genesis nine is not, or that one too. And even like we've talked about a few episodes ago, like there's something in Noah too, in Noah's time that, Mm -hmm. but like I, so. Well, that was Noah's time. Yeah. Genesis oh, oh nine. yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're right. You're right. My bad. Um, but I, I think that there's there's a value for me that I'm placing in life in general. Like my thought on on death penalty or war is like all. Well, those are two different things. But like all, all these people need Jesus, right? Right. Um, war is inevitable because of the sinful world we live in. Doesn't yeah. mean I have to be like a fan of it. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not anti-war by any means. I'm Mm -hmm. just saying I'm not, I'm not in the camp where I'm like, I'm, I want to save the babies, but Mm -hmm. kill everybody else. And so I think that's, that's what's maybe different is like, I, I don't, what I don't understand is. Sanctity of life for you is across the board and not just a single issue. And not, I'm not even going to say sanctity of life. Cause I think for me, it's, it's like, sure, sanctity of life that people are people and God has made those people. But what I want for people is to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's in my mind, the sanctity of it is that this is an opportunity because you're alive to know Jesus. Um, I I think what drives me nuts is like people who, who get, get mad about these shootings, which we should all be mad about the shootings, but then they don't care if we're taking full-term babies Mm -hmm. and killing them. Yeah. I mean, the statement, I forget who it was, some, uh, somebody, there's audio of them. It's some politician saying, um, you know, when, when, what we'll do is let the baby be born, we'll make the baby comfortable. And then the parents and the doctors will decide what to do with it. In other words, you let your baby be born and then you decide whether oh. you're going to kill her and all like that's on recording. And these are the same people who are like condemning certain shootings. And listen, yeah. I want to condemn the shootings. Like, but I also want to condemn the killing of babies. Like in yeah. my mind, it's all the same. So that's what pisses me off. Yeah, that's why I think sure. you're right, Ryan. It's demonic. Because how have we been so convinced as a culture that some killing's okay and some killing's not okay? Mm-hmm. Right. That in my mind makes it seem like this is a lie from the enemy that people that people can be so uh, deceived into thinking like, yep. well, I can justify this killing mm-hmm. in this certain way. Yeah, and it and it it per- or not permeates it it finds its way into churches into conversations amongst believers where there is division. That's exactly what you said earlier. Um, and I think that that's a brilliant way to view spiritual warfare as well because so much of the goal that we have here now as now as believers is to live out the unity we've been given in Christ. And so if these types of lies can come in and cause division, then they're in essence winning that battle, winning yep. that war. Yep. Um, and when, when the gospel when the gospel becomes the not the most important thing for mm-hmm. us. Um, when Absolutely. some kind of like social agenda becomes in the forefront. That's why I think that yep. a social justice warrior as a Christian is kind of a dangerous thing mm-hmm. to be is because the, the the tendency that I've seen, total experience, is that someone who calls himself a social justice warrior actually cares more about social justice than they do about the gospel. Absolutely. Yeah. Not across the board. I get it. There's some people who like are, are big into social justice, but think the gospel is still in the forefront. I just think that it blurs the line. It does. Yeah. 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 And we, and Again, we've I think we've said this off and on a whole bunch. Like, why would we? Why would we as believers want in any way, either through our actions or through what we proclaim or through what we're doing on social media, have a tendency or even the hint of watering down the gospel? Like, why right. would we want to do that at right. all? Whenever we can put the gospel at the forefront, shine the light where it belongs, and then may if you're can if you are driven towards a certain charity or a certain cause, like do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. We have a whole episode over social justice. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but don't elevate that to the standard of, or to the, to the uh, level of the gospel Yep. Um, or to make it even a standard for all believers. Kind of like what we talked about in the episode. Yeah. Here's a thought. Hmm. You want to, you want to shift your perspective? Here's a question for you. When's the last time you shared Jesus with someone that disagrees with you politically? (laughs) Right. Made me spit my water, man. Oh man. You okay? (laughs) Yeah, I'm good. (laughs) <laughs> um, I was the quote you shared a minute ago was interesting. I hadn't heard it, so I pulled it Which up. Which one? The one about you oh, know, making them comfortable. The, yeah. So it, that's the, so sad. But it's well, it's incomplete. So the complete quote. He's still talking about third trimester abortions. Uh-huh. Uh, the immediate context is where there might be severe deformities, or if the fetus might not be viable. So he's still talking about abortion is the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. But he says, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly what would happen. The infant would be delivered. The infant would be kept comfortable. The infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and father desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physician and the mother as to what they would do next. Um, the implication being that if there are deformities, they don't resuscitate and they let the baby die. Gosh, which... But, 
Um, or that they resuscitate and then kill the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like to, until you make it until you're comfortable until with your decision. Decide. So yeah. and, and what this is showing, like, yeah. I think people are, are, are outraged sometimes about the wrong thing. Like yeah, what he's exactly. acknowledging is that that baby is, is less, is not a baby because it has some kind of deformities right. yeah. or he, I love that he says might not be viable as if like yeah. you can decide in that moment whether it's going to be viable or not. Absolutely. I actually wouldn't, let's be honest. I mean, if we're just going to be, if no baby if you want to be nitpicky about it, no baby is viable without outside help. hundred yeah. percent. And, and so that's like, actually a case that's been made yeah. against these policies. Yeah. Mm. So you could, you could make the argument if you were, if you were so inclined, if, if you want to kill a kid, you could call every kid unvi- non-viable mm-hmm. because they can't take care yeah, of themselves. Someone, I've heard yeah. someone recently Ridiculous. make the case that like kids technically aren't viable on their own until they're like, I don't oh. know, like five, six, seven, yeah. and then maybe yeah. some of them aren't viable till like <laughs> yeah. eighteen. Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, fr- a friend of mine the other day took the day off from work uh, and was home with their young child, about three, four years old, and took the day off of work. And uh, somebody called them and said, "Hey, can you come in?" And and they're, they're like, "Well, I'm home with my son." And they're like, "Well, look, just leave him home." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like he's four. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> he can't do anything what's, for himself. What's, what's he going to do? <laughs> Just like, leave a stool? Yeah, exactly. Lock you know, the door like, and he's good. He's yeah. four. Like, <laughs> yeah. how's he? Come on, man. So yeah. to your point, like hum, humans are not like animals that come out of the womb. It, like you, you go on to that. <laughs> A, a giraffe falls six feet to its life. You know? <laughs> it stumbles around for like 20 minutes and, and it's, then it's good. good. You know, yeah. watch out for the lion. You know? exactly, like, I yeah. mean, and humans aren't like that. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and so right. uh, it's just a sick perspective. It's a horrible it's perspective. It's absolutely, well, yeah. And the, everything in that, I think, spits on so much of the view, even in support of being pro choice, because the, yeah. so much of the foundation of being pro choice is based off the woman's body. At that point, no, that's what they say. That's what yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like this, I think this sheds light that that's not the yes. that's yeah, not that's actually not what they're really trying to right. to do. Because yeah. at this point, what you're saying is even when the two bodies are separated, you're in control, yep. and I get to lord over the life in this scenario. Yep. That's the next step. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. We're moving that way. They went from abortion back in the day was. Um, I forget the phrase. I think liberals used to use like classic liberals, or they say like um, r- rare and uncommon. Mm-hmm. They would they made their initial abortion laws based on the fact that there were times when they felt like there needed to be a case for the safety well, of a mother or something to to be killed. And then we've moved to a place. Let me finish real quick. Sorry, yeah. we've moved to a place now where where progressives are saying we're not calling it abortion or we're okay with abortion. We're not calling it murder until after mm-hmm. the baby's born and they're redefining it. So the next phase for us, I think just progressively, not yeah. being a progressive, just the next progression is that yeah. they're going to say, well, I, I can't, um, I can't say this wrong then for a parent to kill their kid at home. Right. Yeah. Like, that's the next progression. That's Absolutely. Where we're going. Yeah. Well, it has and, to be. And senior citizens. And I mean, it'll yeah. stay yeah. anybody that you find it, that anybody that you would then have to be caring for is yeah. going to mm-hmm. be. But what's really interesting is, uh, I was reading on the Daily Wire the other day, like part of the part of the reason Roe v. Wade should be overturned is, and it was interesting because it was saying the liberals don't even don't even acknowledge their own language. So in Roe v. Wade, part of the language is that scientifically it is difficult to call something a life. It's just a blob of cells. And and they were making the argument now in 2022 that we have moved so far scientifically, like so far scientifically, no one can call it a blob of cells anymore. Right. Mm. Because you can detect the heartbeat from such an early age. You can see, you can see fingerprints mm-hmm. form on on babies that are like just weeks old. They yeah. have fingerprints and toes and toenails and eyelashes and eyebrows. Like uh, and with the kind of sonogram and the material and the technology we have now to be able to hear heartbeats and to like yeah. it even perform surgery now on yep. on kids in utero, mm-hmm. like there isn't there isn't any way that language from the seventies can stand today, and yet they're going we can't overturn it when the whole the whole premise by the court the Supreme Court then was. We can't we can't scientifically declare that this is living yet. So that was part of the whole system. Which we can now uh, scientifically mm-hmm. you can. So so science only matters when we want it to matter. You know, exactly, and so like yeah. it's just uh, I don't know. The whole thing's it's sick. And I think you're right, Ryan. Like it demonic. has it has to be demonic in its mm-hmm. influence because of how far well, I mean, it was the I think that way in the beginning, but how far it's gone. Like we more more babies are killed every year than than any other kind of, of death. Like right. the, all these shootings that happen, 
is like a small percentage of compared to the number yeah. of babies. I'm not saying that they're okay. No, no, no. What I'm saying is like we're outraged over one, but not the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. I I do hate it. Um, yeah, I think too often because people aren't able to be consistent in their own stances, they look at other people making a stance and they view that as inconsistent. I don't know. I haven't really thought that thought out, but they'll look at you. They'll look at you making a stance and that like, well, then you, but you care about war and they just throw that on you immediately. Well, or, it becomes, or you do this or you do that. It becomes a diversion from the Yeah, that's a better way of saying topic. it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And people try to do that oftentimes. Like if you get yeah. them in a corner in mm-hmm. a conversation, they'll try to divert to someone else, something else that they feel more confident in instead yeah. of actually continuing the conversation there. Mm-hmm. Um, which happens a lot around abortion. I found like it's, yeah. it's funny. Well, you, you know, you, you guys are, are pro life, but uh, like, what about all these kids in foster care? It's like, dude, mm-hmm. we're not talking about the kids in foster care. We're exactly. talking about killing babies. <laughs> exactly. We can talk about that later too. Mm-hmm, Do right. I have thoughts on that? Yeah. But like, that's your justification for killing babies. So they don't have to go to foster care. Yeah. You're telling me one of those kids in foster care says, maybe some of them would say this, but like that you would, re- you would rather those kids be dead than being in that's, the foster yeah, care system. That's, like that's yeah. how it should be turned that's back around actually, on them. Yeah. That's actually an argument being made. Golly. There are people who say that, you they're know, better off. that they're better off so like they're, this. What is it? Euthanasia? That's like the, the medical term for killing somebody, for putting somebody to sleep or whatever. Is that right? Are you using that correctly? So I was like, like that, that's the like, argument, like ethically for older people. That's for, I think that's for someone who wants to commit suicide, right? I don't think so. I think, I think some people have used that for people, like even like unplugging like the life support for, for older people who are only living off oh, of that. Really? I think that's still considered okay. euthanasia. Like in the, yeah, the, I could be the wrong. The painless killing of a patient suffering from an incurable or painful disease. Okay. Oh, so it strictly or, has to do with disease. Yeah. I gotcha. So I would, I'd be misusing that then, but it would be broadening that to the standpoint of, are you an inconvenience to society? Like, right. are you, so like that's we, where we're we, exactly. Yep. And it's, and it's, well, it's, I mean, technically we're already there. We've no, already opened right. the door to that. Oh, you're just yeah. saying we're heading that we're more. We're going to add more people to that list. I always think yeah. about the, the, one of those beginning scenes in the movie 300 where they take the deformed babies and throw them off the side oh, of the cliff. Yeah. Like that's what, I mean, that's in essence what this is, is yeah. saying that we're not okay with it if they're deformed. Did y'all see at the March for Life this last year, I think it was in the fall, there was a uh, a lady who gave a speech with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. It was dope. And she was basically saying like how sad it is that so many, so many people like her are being killed um, in the womb oh, because- Oh, man. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, it, and they've never been given a chance at life. No. And she's talking about all the things that she's done and all the ways mm-hmm. that she's I, living I on love, her own. I love how public the last few years- um, like how public of a run there has been with people who have Down syndrome who are married and having families and are doing businesses. Yeah. Because the and 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 it's stupid that it has taken this long. Mm-hmm. But there was a time in our culture, and, and it still it still is the case. Like, uh, I mean, we're talking we're talking Riker, our youngest, is eleven years old. When Michelle was pregnant with him, it, the doctor still asked, "Do you want to test to see, you know, mm-hmm. if maybe they have Down syndrome or not?" And I, I point blank asked the doctor. What's the point of doing that right, so yeah. that you can know if you want to terminate? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's, we're still doing that. Like this, this person doesn't have any viability. This person doesn't yep. have any value because they aren't what I would consider an ideal specimen mm-hmm. of health. There was, there was this uh, deal that I saw the other day. Um, I follow a couple of fitness people on Instagram and one guy shared a photo of a, I think, I think an Indian man, um, like India mm-hmm. and he was shredded from the waist up and his legs are just shriveled. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's standing, but barely. And the guy who posted it, he's a, he owns a gym. He's a personal trainer. He's jacked. And he said, all you guys who are commenting on this post about, Oh, skipped leg day. He goes, this dude has polio. Oh my he, he can barely stand yeah. and, and this guy has worked hard and he and then he shared other photos of this guy competing in bodybuilding competitions <laughs> his legs are just skin and bone because the polio mm-hmm. ruined yeah. his legs but he's like all you guys out there are going making fun of this dude who has worked his butt off to mm-hmm. like you know and i think we're like that like we're, oh you're different oh you you don't you yeah. don't look like me you're not as viable as me um who's the uh <laughs> He's hilarious and he's poignant. Who's the Australian? I think he's Australian. The speaker that doesn't have legs or arms and he's. He, oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. He's I don't know his name though, but I, don't know I believe about, yeah. he's a believer as well. Mm-hmm. Like he talks about his faith and like just people would look at him and go, "Oh man, you didn't stand the chance." And he's old enough that I'm honestly surprised that the pregnancy was carried on to completion. Like he's mm-hmm. close to my age. I feel like, but uh, I don't know. Like, when are we going to get to the point where we quit deciding whether or not somebody's worth it? Like. 
I think that, I mean, if we're, if we're honest, that's not actually, I think that's not actually the issue. Yeah. I think that, I think that it's a sick perspective of, it's an arrogance. I think that yeah. like, mm-hmm. like when they, when the left says, um, women have a right to their own bodies, um, what they're in essence saying is like, we should be able to to kill whoever the hell we want to kill if we feel like we want to kill them. Mm -hmm. So it's an arrogant saying, like we get to determine what is okay and isn't okay in society. So I I think that it's funny that in a, in a movement that is self-proclaimed to be accepting, Mm -hmm. you're actually negating um, the same value by saying, if there's something off with this baby a little bit, like, like who, who are we to say that, Um, a baby, a baby that has complications, um, isn't, isn't of the same value. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a sick perspective. So that's what I mean. I don't think it's, I I think that this is also the same group that, that are the same movement that doesn't want culture to use words like retarded. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's just what's funny to but, me is yeah, like, but they're, like yeah. you, you only care, you only care about them later when it's convenient for you to have a certain policy wrapped around it. You don't care about them when they're in the womb. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's inconsistent and stupid and of the devil. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and I sound like I'm like uber charismatic when I'm saying that stuff. And that's not my, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, I think that, I think that the, all this is a lie from the enemy that people have been convinced of that. Like wh- why have we moved that direction? I think it's because we're probably moving towards the end. Mm-hmm. and getting yeah. closer and closer to Jesus coming back. And yeah. for those of you who are like, oh, you're so freaked out by all this stuff, like our hope rests in Jesus. So it doesn't mean yeah. we don't fight this stuff. It doesn't mean we don't like speak up and have a voice. But ultimately, like what people need is not to change their morals. What people need is a gospel because the only thing that's ever going to shift in this world, shifts people's perspective on those things is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's where we we have to be vigilant Is is not, we can we can air our opinions, but what we have to be vigilant in is being people who proclaim the gospel mm-hmm. to even people that we have a great distaste for. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, people need Jesus. We'll make this a crazy short PCC for yeah, you guys. I don't know how long since, we've been since going we talked on that. that. Was a long conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so good, really, I just have a question. This has been going viral. Uh, so, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the PCC. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sit down, get comfortable, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> now we're good, mm, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> hey, uh, this I've already asked you this, Ryan, but I've seen this 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 TikTok kind of. I think it had over two million likes and several million views. Um, but this person posed this question. I'm going to ask you, Micah, just to get your thought on it. Um, if a meeting is at noon, <laughs> and then the person who's putting on the meeting says, "Can we move it forward two hours? What time is the meeting at now?" Man, he's overthinking this. Or what's your initial thought, I guess, could be the could be the question. So my initial thought is it would depend on who's telling me this. <laughs> True, right? <laughs> um, if it was Ryan telling me this, it would be at 10. Mm-hmm. 100%. Because um, that's the right w- answer. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it is someone... Uh, if it is someone who typically is late all the time... Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, I think it would be 10 because even those people would be, would say like, mm-hmm. hey, can we move it back yeah. a couple hours? Yeah. No, I think it'd be 10. Yeah, so I my, can't. His is two. My my initial Pierce thought was two. two. No, hey, well, pause for a second. Like a crazy <laughs> person. This is my corner. You back off. <laughs> Sorry. This is, no, it's fine. My, but but corner, you're right. My initial thought was two until I began to think about it because I was only thinking about it from a time perspective, because I think of like the phrase like spring forward, like we go forward a couple hours or we go forward an hour for daylight savings. Um, thinking about moving forward. I think about a forward progression. But then I was like, but they're talking about a, they're talking about a schedule. And then I immediately was like, oh, 10. Because yeah. I was thinking about it as in regards to a schedule. Like if I'm beginning my day and then this meeting is moving forward towards me, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. I'm yeah. starting my day at 8 a.m. You're bringing up, you're bringing up the meeting forward. That's coming to me. So therefore 10 a.m. Yeah. If that makes we sense. Need to move, Which is super, we need to move the meeting up in the schedule. We need to move the meeting exactly, forward in Exactly, yeah. yeah. But if something is just moving forward in time, it wouldn't be going back in time. But then I was like, but that wasn't a question. And so I, then I had to assess and be like, so I think I would agree 
10, which is, is what we lot, talked about the other is day. Is there a lot of discrepancy over this TikTok? Thing? Oh my gosh, it blew up. There, really? What's funny is so- people said five. Yeah, no, they <laughs> can't even, <laughs> do, can't can't even do math. <laughs> so the people that I saw sharing it, uh, there was two or three guys that I saw share it and I read their comments and that friend group was all like 10, 10 a.m. What kind of idiot would ever say 2 p.m.? And I was like, well, first of all, <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> well, well, excuse, well, let me just me. come on in here for you a second. Angry. And uh, personal. But then I know, that's right. And uh, But then I went back to the original TikTok and the first like 50 comments were all two. And then people were like, wait a minute, what? You guys are saying two? No way. And then there's just all this back and forth. And then she had a response, which I don't know if I... 100% agree with. I'd want to I'd want to look at it more, but she had a response to say it's all based off of how you personally view time. Do you view yourself as going through time or time going through you? That's uh, weird. And I, I was like, like and I was like, but that I was like, but I've shifted real easily as soon as you said it's a schedule. Like yeah. as soon as I thought about it from that perspective and not time, I was like, oh no, because that that point it's like in my mind it's like a sheet. And we're just bumping this up. Or like I said earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning my day. You're pulling that forward towards me versus time itself moving forward. Yeah. Um, and later. And so, but she, she, yeah, she illustrated like, are you, is time going through you or are you the one progressing and going through it? Um, which is interesting, but I don't know if this is a good barrier of a, a, I, a good weird, way to judge okay, that. Good way to judge that is that. like, like that's a philosophical thought. Mm-hmm. On a non-philosophical topic. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> is that like it's this is a weird way to judge that, and that's why because I think that would be like that would be like saying, well, I don't actually believe my watch. Time is a construct, it, which which to some <laughs> degree it is because we've created right. we've created yes. we've created the the time system we have. Yeah, we and created the clock yeah. That yeah. yeah. So based like off of yeah. Them. So well, you can have the philosophical question, but not in terms of like if we'd agree if we've agreed society wise that like mm -hmm. it's a twenty four hour day. Yeah. And it's 10 o'clock in the morning right now. Well, that's a bad example because it's part of the deal. If it's nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> we're not going to have a philosophical conversation about whether it's actually nine or not. Yeah, that exactly. That doesn't help us interact with each other. So if I say, can we move the meeting forward two hours? Mm -hmm. It would have to be like the the agreed upon society use of the word forward, forward or back yeah. in terms of schedule or calendar or time. I would have to ask for clarification. I would be like, okay, what do you mean by that? And I'll still be late either way, but. I think one of the most ridiculous we, things is that bi-monthly can mean twice a month or every or other month. Or every other month, yeah. Which is just dumb. It's stupid, man. But let's talk about that on another Agreed. Yeah. What are we talking about or today? Is, that, oh, is that talking about gender with monthly? <laughs> yeah, no, right. How, whoa, whoa, whoa. how does the month feel? You know. <laughs> or that's not gender. Sorry, that's sexuality. Sexuality. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, what are we talking about today? Oh, Pierce. Today we are talking about conviction and the Holy Spirit uh, bringing conviction in our life over the things that are not in step or in line with Jesus Christ. But Ryan, isn't the goal of, conv of conviction to remind me that I'm a failure? Well, actually, Pierce, as it concerns you, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> two p.m. Really? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> no one rational thinks two p.m. Exactly. Uh, well, actually, Pierce, the, the Paul um, Paul talks about in his what we have as the second letter of Corinthians in Second Corinthians seven. He references a letter that he wrote the Corinthians, probably not First Corinthians. They a lot of people think it was the one in between. But he says, you know, I'm glad that I caused you sorrow. And he says, um, I, I, I'm not, he, well, he, here's what he says. Let me read it. He says, uh, says, as it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. You felt godly grief. And he said, this godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas godly, worldly grief produces death. And he says, this godly grief has produced earnestness in you and eagerness to clear yourselves, indignation, fear, longing, zeal. And, uh, and so that you've proved yourself innocent. And so this idea is that like the Holy Spirit has been given to us by God, according to John 14 and 16, to guide us into all truth, to teach us who Christ is, what he's said, to show us who God is, what he's done, um, and to make us into the likeness of Christ. And because we have the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit's job in us, or at least one of the jobs in us, is to make us more like Jesus, which by default means that he's going to be showing us things in us that don't look like Christ. Mm -hmm. um, th those are things that the Holy Spirit's going to be revealing to us. And, um, you know, people, I, I, I'm of the camp that, that we can honor Jesus in our day-to-day -day life. I mm -hmm. really believe that. Now, people yeah. will say to me, oh, but Ryan, we're only human. We're going to sin. 
I didn't say that. Who's asking you about Ryan questions? <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> the people who think the meeting got moved to two. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're there later in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but th- th- there's this mindset. Like people always want to make excuses for their sin and go, well, it's just inevitable that we're going to sin. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I, I really believe, I believe that there are things in my life right now that I'm not calling sin that are. Um, it, it, let me say it a different way. I believe that there are things in my life right now that don't best represent the gospel and don't best represent Jesus. And so maybe not muddy it. Let's not call it sin. Yeah. There, there, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. So there, there are things in my life that don't, don't, represent Christ well, yeah. that I'm not aware of. Um, uh, and, and I'm, I know I'm saying this completely based off of experience. There, there are things now that I'm convicted over that I wasn't convicted over 20 years ago as I'm growing and maturing in Christ. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, okay, I want to, I want to, Michael, you had mentioned, I think on the last podcast that, uh, or a couple of podcasts ago, I don't remember when it was, when we talked about anger, whenever that was, but you had mentioned that you used to be angry a lot as a college student, and then that came out of pride. But no, uh, sorry, I, I wasn't angry a lot. No, I how was, did you say it? I I found myself like reacting in anger. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. if someone if someone came at me, my initial response typically was anger. I wasn't yeah. like an angry person, yeah, but yeah, like yeah, how I responded was anger up and front. That, and that retrospectively, you feel like that came out of pride. Yeah. So that's something that God showed mm-hmm. you, and now. People outside looking in today might go, oh man, Micah's really angry. And it's you're not angry, mm-hmm. but you're you're handling things that are contrary to the gospel with a firmness that that's not based out of how Micah feels about the situation, but based on the gospel. Right. And and so so there there are areas in all of our lives, I think, the three of us at least, where we can go, you know, this was something that I wasn't even really aware of 20 years ago that now I'm aware of, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and where it gets sticky, I think, is that some of it is sin. Some of it and, is and sin. And some yeah. of it, I think, is just like a, Maturity. Uh, a honing of certain yeah. certain tendencies. And I think that's actually where people get hung up sometimes is like, I mean, you muddy it a little more for us. I think sometimes <laughs> people feel feel a feeling they're going to call conviction that might not, might not actually be the spirit. So for example, yeah. we, we set cultural morals a lot in Christianity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll give an example. Like I think sometimes there's people who probably feel bad because they accidentally pray with their hat on. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's not sin. Yeah. It's not wrong. You yeah. might feel that way because you grew up believing that that's not like, like an okay thing to do. Yeah. But there's literally nothing in the scripture that talks about that. And for those of you geniuses who are going to go, well, second Corinthians says it's, it's first not, Corinthians, first 11. Corinthians, sorry, yeah. 11, not okay for a man to worship with his head covered. Um, that's not what he's talking about, but if that is where the direction you want to go, that's fine. Just make sure that all the women have their head covered when they're praying. Otherwise right. it's because he says that too. Right. So yeah. my point is like, yeah. I think that there's some things that we, it gets muddy for us because we've created this moral system sometimes where we quote unquote feel like there's conviction over things that aren't necessarily things we should be, be convicted of. Like growing up, we prayed before every single meal. And I kind of just assumed like this was like a what you do. Like this was a right or wrong thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Instead of having the perspective like, man, what an opportunity to thank God that we actually get to eat. Yeah. And so we don't our family prays before most meals. Mm-hmm. A lot of meals, yeah. but there are meals we will eat where we won't pray beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody at the conference, the Simpler Conference, uh, laughed as we were getting a- after lunch, and mm-hmm. they were like, "You guys didn't pray before lunch." And <laughs> and one person was like, "Yeah, that that was kind of weird for me that y'all didn't pray before lunch." And the person sitting next to them, uh, they were a married couple. The person sitting next to them goes, "I love it," <laughs> you know. <laughs> And like, uh, you know, like just that, like it challenges the status quo a little bit. So that my point is like, we, they, they obviously expressed to to my point that they felt some kind of tension about that. Like, and so I'm not saying like, this means we ignore like conviction over things that seem to be sin. Like I think pride in me when I was in college was simple, but I think that there's sometimes there's con- what we were going to call conviction that might not be conviction. So I think the beginning of this conversation is actually being able to be free of this perspective of there's cultural morals that we uphold above, above Jesus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that's a journey. Yeah. That's a journey of beginning to recognize those things. Ryan, in the past, you've admitted this, like you, you even felt like people who wouldn't show up for church, 
you felt like there was something wrong yeah. in them. And you realize later, like that can't be a barometer for no. someone's walk with Jesus or yeah. their. And so I think that. Yeah, I think I figured that out last month, right? <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> so <laughs> last week. <laughs> so then I think that, so I'm just kind of laying some framework. I think that's the beginning is recognizing that there might be some cultural morals we, we have set up or have believed yeah. that. We, that might cause us to feel bad. And I'm going to say that's different than the conviction you're talking about, Ryan. I think the, now I will say this on the flip. I think the conviction the spirit brings is always moving us towards a place where we look more like Jesus. Yep. Yeah. So maybe even the conviction for someone would be what, what like we're used, we're used to think like someone showing up for Sunday church was like a barometer for their spirituality and the state of their the health of their spirituality. Yeah. Maybe the conviction for you was recognizing that that wasn't an okay place to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes conviction doesn't have to just be sin. I think it right. could be like things in our life that are yeah. keeping us from becoming more like Jesus or honoring Jesus. Well, and for helping sure. us to think more like Christ. Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, I think that, I think that sometimes it's it's just we have to learn how to think like Jesus. We have to learn how to approach this world from the standpoint of Christ. One of the things that I think that Paul does really well here, and maybe this will help you guys who are listening. Uh, that's a stupid thing to say because <laughs> anyone who's not listening isn't ever going to hear this. So maybe they're I, I, watching, maybe they're using YouTube subtitles that are yeah. just terrible at converting. <laughs> yeah. But even there, <laughs> maybe they're, maybe they're still listening. listening. Maybe yeah. they're deaf and it's been transcribed into Braille form. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long still. is it? How long is this episode living on for? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're just written in stone. Somewhere. I, think that, <laughs> no, yeah. right, I think that Paul gives us a really good framework for evaluating, uh, whether it's the spirit in us or pride or ego yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah. by saying, by comparing, by, by comparing uh, godly grief versus worldly grief. Mm, yeah. So godly grief has the result of repentance, salvation. Uh, if you're not saved, um, um, eagerness and, and, and earnestness to, to move into godly character. It produces those kinds of things. Whereas mm -hmm. worldly grief, he sums it up in one thing. It produces death. And, mm -hmm. and so like worldly grief condemns worldly grief says you're no good or says that someone, you know, so like, yeah. so if this thing you're feeling, um, and you're going, man, you're, you're measuring yourself by some standard and you feel grief and you feel sorrow and it is condemning you rather than motivating you mm. deeper into the heart of God. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. The spirit has one aim mm -hmm. and that is to conform you to the likeness of Christ. So he is not going to set you back by kicking your butt and going, yeah, you worthless piece of crap. Like mm -hmm. that's not the goal of the spirit. Yeah. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Christ loves and obeys and glorifies the father so much that he died for you. And he mm -hmm. loved you by, uh, he, he says that by this, a man, um, oh, what does he say? Crap. Uh, he doesn't say crap. He says, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 a friend, uh, no greater love, greater love has no man than this, that you lay down your life for your friends and yeah, I've yeah. called you friends. And so like Christ loved us and laid his life down for us. Right. And then the spirits, the spirit loves us mm -hmm. and the, and the spirit is moving us into the likeness of Christ. And so it, th there are things in me that I see that don't line up with Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes those are things that I have kind of this, this zeal, this passion, this, uh, almost like, uh, I don't know, like, it, I'm going to use this again, but this kind of Rocky Four training <laughs> montage of, I want to beat the crap out of this thing so I can be more like Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there have been times in my life that I've been so self-deprecating and so self-loathing that it has caused me to wallow in self doubt mm. and pity. Mm, yeah. And those are two different types of grief or conviction or whatever you want to call them. One of them is coming from God because it thrusts you into the heart of God. And mm -hmm. one is coming from the world because it cripples you and it destroys you and it leaves you hopeless. And, and so, like, are there things in your life that don't look like Jesus? Certainly, right? Certainly. How do you know if the, the sorrow you feel in your heart is coming from the Spirit or yourself or the world? It, by, by your response to that sorrow. If, if the natural outpouring of that response is, man, I want to press into the heart of mm -hmm. Jesus, that's mm -hmm. coming from Christ. That's coming from the Spirit. Yeah, and I think that there's an essence of this as well that Galatians 5 16 through 21 kind of alludes to, and we've talked about yeah, this yeah, some yeah. is like, you know, if you walk by the spirit, you won't gratify the desires of the flesh. They're meaning like works we do on our own. Right. And he seems to say that when we try to, when we try to do it in the flesh, when we try to, mm -hmm. when we try to like, in essence, like 
do things on our own for the sake of earning the pleasure of God or, the, or righteousness instead of relying on the spirit, which is what he means there by flesh, that it's obvious. He says it's obvious. The works of the flesh are obvious and he gives this list of things. So like if you find yourself at a place where you're like your life looks like one of those things in that list, yeah. you could guarantee that you're actually trying to rely on yourself yep. instead of rely on the spirit. But when you rely on the spirit, he says, this is what your life looks like. And he yeah. gives what we call the fruit of the spirit. Right. So I think there's an essence of there too, where you can look at the fruit of your life, yep. the things coming out and go, am I relying on the spirit who is moving me, like you're saying, Ryan, to a place where I look more like Jesus, or am I relying on my own works and my own flesh? Which I think, I think that's why I harp sometimes on like, on, on, so-called Christian morals sometimes mm -hmm. that aren't like mm -hmm. biblical things, like taking your hat off in the building, yep. um, what kind of clothes you wear, um, certain language you use or don't use. Like all these things are self-created morals for us. And I feel like you, you talked about this a few weeks ago or probably a while back, a couple months ago at church, Ryan, uh, where is it? Self-made um, religion and asceticism. Is yeah. it Colossians? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Colossians two. two. Yeah. Um, I think that's like what we're trying to do sometimes is like, we have this, this idea of like what a Christian should look like. And mm -hmm. we're trying so hard to abide by that standard. That's not a biblical standard. It's a cultural viewpoint yep. that we, we produces have condemnation, produces judgment. condemnation. Yeah. And yeah. so like, I think there's a lot of Christians who feel like they're not doing a good job because they're actually just trying to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to fulfill a standard of what Christianity is supposed to look like instead of, instead of backing up and going, I recognize who I am now because I put faith in Jesus, I've been made clean, I've been declared righteous, I'm a child of God now. I'm, God calls me holy and he gave me his spirit. And what the spirit's doing is reminding me of all the things Jesus said and yep. teaching me all things new, moving me in the direction of looking more like Jesus. And if I just rely on him, then I think the steps become obvious. You know, I have, I have yeah. friends who will ask me, well, then what do I do? Like, what's the next step? The next step is to just follow the spirit because I think that mm -hmm. next step looks different for everybody. Yeah. And, and depending on where you're at in life and what's, what state your life is in, you, you trust that the the Spirit's going to guide you that direction. And I'll tell you this, there are, I feel like I'm at a place in my walk with God where I know what the Spirit's telling me. Mm, and yeah. it becomes a little more clear all the time. I've shared this story before, but there was a time when like, I, I felt like I was telling me to give some water to a dude at a rest stop oh, in New yeah. Mexico. And I didn't like a case of water and I didn't. And I've never felt so heavy before after leaving, it was just water. And he had water, a lady just giving him water. It wasn't about him getting water. It was about me, I think, you obeying, obeying yeah. like trusting God. So I think mm -hmm. there's a point you come to in, in your, like, I'm not going to say that was sinful in the sense of like, um, you could make a case like you didn't obey God, but I, I'm not, what I'm saying is I don't think it was sinful in the case of like, the rule is every time you see someone who right. needs water, <laughs> yeah, you give yeah, them absolutely. water. And if you don't, that's sinful. So this is what I mean is the direction of growth is the goal isn't just to not be, or it can't be to not be sinful. The goal is to follow the spirit right. so that when you feel conviction, you, you know, the spirit's doing something in you to move, move you a certain direction. Conviction isn't about to your dumb question, Pierce, isn't about <laughs> just rec making you recognize how terrible a person you are. Mm -hmm. The conviction is moving you forward. Mm -hmm. It's right. shaping you and moving you forward instead of going, Oh crap. I just, I just always screw up. I'm a ter terrible person. Take the, take the understanding that conviction is the spirit moving you forward. So you look mm -hmm. more like Jesus. Right. Yeah. Uh, Paul says in um, Ephesians, Ephesians 4, he says in verse 30, he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, um, I, I think we need to understand this in a little bit more context. So he says, uh, to walk in the truth of Jesus, back beginning in verse 22, he says, to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new self created after the likeness of God in righteousness and holiness. Having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Give no opportunity to the devil. And uh, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for the building up of others, that it may give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. I think, this is just me, uh, 
I don't think that do, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God is one of a, in the list of commands. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's giving them these instructions that this is how you look. And then he's subtly saying, and this is how it's done. It's done mm-hmm. by the Holy Spirit. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Like submit to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one who's birthing these works in you. Yeah. He's the one who's who's teaching you how to build up the body. And he's the one who is taking the thief away from being a thief to being someone who mm-hmm. is mm. uh, productive with their mm. time. And he is the one who is causing people to uh, be kind to one another and tenderhearted. Like it's, this is the work of the Spirit. Like it, it, I feel like he's going... Uh, he's he's saying, look, Christian, believer, look like this. And in the middle of it, he's going, trust the spirit, trust the process. And then he kind of finishes his thought, you know, mm-hmm. because I don't know. Uh, it, it's a similar thing to what he says in First Thessalonians 5, where he says, don't put out the spirit's fire, but similar kind of thing. He gives a list of instructions. Um, he, he, he tells them a lot of things that they should be about and that they should do. And then he tells them right in the middle of it all, don't quench the spirit. And it's, it feels this kind of like this random inclusion, but I don't think it's random at all. I think it's like what God is calling you to do, mm-hmm. he is giving you the spirit to equip you to do. Like, yeah. and, and, and so like, so don't, don't, don't resist the conviction you're feeling from the Holy Spirit. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I really don't know how this looks. I truly don't. I wish that I had better language for it. Maybe one of you will, but I believe like that case, Micah, of the case of water, the homeless guy, whatever, like I believe that the spirit speaks clearly to us. And in that moment, we get to decide if we're going to submit to him or not Mm -hmm. case by case. And some of them will be big issues and some of them will be like (laughs) cases of water. You know what I mean? Um, th- there, there are times that, that I have felt that, uh, I shared this at a uh, church on Sunday, a few months ago when I was talking about the Holy spirit one time, but like, there have been times that I have not been able to get somebody out of my head until I call them or text them. And for mm-hmm. like two or three days, they're just in my head. And if I had just called them or texted them the first day, I can't imagine that I would have felt that weight on me yeah. for three days. Yeah. Um, but like the spirit was prompting me to call this person mm-hmm. or to reach out to this person mm-hmm. or whatever. And I do wonder a little bit, I, I know it's different. Okay. Because I know that in the new Testament, Christ has died. He's been raised from the dead. He's overthrown the power of sin and death. We've been sealed with the Holy spirit, but I do, I do wonder a little bit. And so if this is way off, shut it down quickly. But in the old Testament, he uses prophets and he says to his people, Israel over and over and over again. And again, Israel is not a one-to-one correlation with believers, but he's trying to bring Israel back into line with what he desires for them. Mm -hmm. And he says, I sent the prophets rising up early over and over and over again, but you would not listen. And so eventually there's a consequence for not listening. And I do wonder like, can we can we quench the Holy Spirit? Can we uh, can we grieve the Holy Spirit to the point where we're either maybe it's not that He quits speaking to us, but we don't hear it as clearly? Mm-hmm. Or can, I don't know what that looks like, but I, I do know that like the Spirit has been given to us to guide us into all truth, to remind yeah. us what's sinful, to show us what's yeah, holy, yeah. to show us who Christ is. Yeah, I think is I think I think that the answer would be that we would we would view that as a lack of submission to the spirit. I think that sure. kind of kind of what you're saying of like but that but that would also imply that it's not necessarily always a a a step by step thing. And what I mean by that is you're either developing that aversion to being submitted or you weren't ever submitted. That's more of like a character livelihood li- yeah. living out type of a thing whereas to say that it's a base by or a, instance by instance things you're choosing in that moment to submit or to not submit. Yeah. I think that there it's both is that you can see people who are living either with something very specific or with a with general attitude of non-submission. And I think that that could even begin to question where they are with Jesus in, in, a, in a certain level, if it's just a continual place where they're continually pushing that aside. Yeah. Um, but I think that there would be, I think my initial thought is to acknowledge that there is a difference between a base by base submission, sub, submitting case, by case. case, what did I say? Base well, by I, base, I'm base just, by yeah. base, case by case, submitting a base, a base uh, <laughs> submitting and a lifestyle, if that makes sense yeah. of not submitting. Yeah. Um, and I, kind of what you're saying is like kind of developing at, language, at for, developing language. Somebody really knows Jesus. If they're yeah. going to continue to reject well, 
Can you clarify what you mean about lifestyle? Of, would you say lifestyle of submitting or not yeah? Submitting? I think I think that so 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 you had brought up or you brought the, the water story like that. That's a that's in that moment. Are you going to do what the Holy Spirit is is urging you to do or not? Are you going to make the phone call or not? Um, but you had brought up I don't know if it was in this episode or in in the conversation uh, before the episode. But you had talked about kind of like fear and insecurity and realizing here and now that there's a a light shined on that, that I was not submitting this fully to God. Right. Um, and so you're living kind of day by day with, with this not being submitted. And then it's, then it's exposed. I guess maybe that is the case by case. Cause then it's exposed and you're thinking, yeah. am I going to submit now or am I going to continue holding on to it? So maybe, maybe it, maybe I'm lying. Like I think that no, I'm just kind of shaking yeah, my language there, but well, that, that's what I meant. That's what I meant by out the language. Yeah. We're figuring out yeah. the language. So that's, but that's what I meant is that there seems to be moments that are instantaneous, but then you, there are other moments of conviction to use this language where you realize like, Oh, I've been holding on to this for a while. Like I've been, yeah, I, this, this is, this has been in my life for a long time I, and I need to learn how I to don't feel like let I this go. have been resisting the Holy spirit in my insecurity and fear I honestly felt like, because I'm not the same person I was when I was in from 15 to 25, 26 years old, where Absolutely. literally every day I was begging God to kill me and mm-hmm. I was doing self-harm and I was making really crappy choices because I didn't like me. Mm. Um, I, I, I have come to put a lot of confidence in Christ and I've come mm-hmm. to put a lot of trust in God and um, I function pretty well. And I think that that was my mistake is I thought, well, I'm, I've made it. I'm good. <laughs> and and now the Holy Spirit is going, yeah, but not really. So let's, yeah. let's mm. peel back some more, like I'm being refined. So yeah. would I'm you being s- transformed. And, and, and I've, I like this phrase, I think is really key. And maybe this is where we need to land. I'm being transformed from glory to glory until the day of Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and this is another point of transformation that the Holy Spirit's doing. So like the veil, to use the same illustration, the veil's being moved a little more. Is that what you mean? Yeah. You mm. know, like I'm... So, because I'm wondering if like, if all this is, is like if, if your example, I'm wondering if there's like a, uh, veil's probably the right word, like a filter put on the spirit that we're putting on what the spirit's telling us t- to some degree. Mm. Yeah. That might be a bad way to say it, but what I mean Where is we can't like... see the whole picture. Yeah. So we're like, maybe, maybe... I would have a hard, what I mean is I would have a hard time believing for the last 25 years that the spirit hasn't been like tugging at you yeah. to let go of your control in this area. Yeah. But why have, why has it not been clear until recently? I'm wondering if there's Blind like, spot, pride. because, well, mm. I was going to say what you said a second ago was you felt like you, which you are in a better spot and you felt like that was the thing that was making it okay. Felt like I was finished. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm wondering if that's like a filter or, mm. or like a, a veil to some degree on, on the spirit. Like I wonder if in, in the mm. same way that I think someone who creates their own Christian morals can put some kind of like veil on what the spirit's actually saying. Yeah. I wonder Oh, okay. This is interesting. It might be shot down right away, but I wonder if godly sorrow is necessary for the change. Oh, like actually having to go through sorrow, like yep. grief and sorrow. You, godly. Have, you have to grieve the part of you that is not in line with Christ. Oh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's dying. Yes. Yeah. And because yeah. I didn't grieve that part for 25 years because oh. I thought I was successful. Ooh. Why, why grieve it when I, when I'm comparing it to who I, here's the problem. I'm comparing it backwards instead of forward. I'm comparing it to who I was from 15 to 25 instead of who Christ is. Yep. And uh, if I had compared yeah. it to who Christ is, then I would have been grief stricken and it, it would have yeah. taken me 25 years to get to this next step. Yep. That's true. But yeah. because I've compared it to previous Ryan to past Ryan or some people compare it to other people or compare it to other people, <gasps> yeah. we feel successful. We feel vindicated in the place we are because you're better than you were and you're better than where other mm-hmm. people are. Yep. And so instead of com- like, if I compare it to Christ, it grieves me. Mm. Yeah. And that grief then, instead of crippling me, because it's grief given to me by the Holy Spirit, that grief empowers me and emboldens me to move forward, to move yeah. out of it. That's so super maybe, interesting. maybe grief, maybe sorrow. Like, let's just be honest yeah. for just a moment. I, I have to imagine, and, and maybe I'll come up with something tomorrow that makes me in the next podcast, next when next week like, going, oh, never mind. <laughs> but but I would have to believe that if there is something in me that doesn't look like Christ. Mm-hmm the correct response to that would be sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so the Holy Spirit, maybe sorrow is the pre-we- pre-we- prerequisite. 
I'm going to have some sorrow about that later. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw your whole mouth like go into that W sound and all that's about to happen. <laughs> Be wiggles in. <laughs> Maybe sorrow is the prerequisite Requis- to growth. Yeah, I, wasky wabbit. Yeah, godly, <laughs> so, godly sorrow, godly grief. Elma Fudd. Oh man. Yeah, the way I think that's way better language than what we used to say. But but I remember um, when I was in when I was playing in metal bands and hardcore bands, we had kind of a core group of friends, and there was a few people that just get continually made just poor decisions right. and 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 claimed Christ, but it's just aspects of their lives maybe didn't line up with that. Like my viewpoint back then, and I remember having these types of conversations about conviction and kind of like, well, why are we so why would we say that we're more passionate or more zealous mm-hmm. or more convicted in these areas than this person might be? And that was one of the things that was brought up was, was just, they don't seem to be broken. Like yeah. they don't seem to. And I think that the better language is instead of saying like someone has to be broken down or torn down or any of that, but rather instead of using that language, like I would have back then using the language of they're not comparing their lifestyle to, to Jesus. And, yeah. and that we, that through the Holy spirit, through the accomplishments of Christ that is attainable like that, that's given to us. We've been given um, all things to participate in God, I forget how, how Peter says it, but participation of godliness, like to, right. to live out Everything a life you need for life and godliness yeah. to participate in the divine nature. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we've been given the Holy spirit. We've been given these things. And so that is absolutely attainable. So viewing it through the standard of Christ and therefore Instead of like you said, viewing it backwards, huh. um, saying 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 my life is better than it used to be, so it's okay. That's why saying, that's why some people don't feel conviction. Could you say that again? No, Siri, no. I'm not going to. <laughs> that's why that's why some people don't feel conviction. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, is because they're they feel like they're okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and which that, yeah. which is which is why, and I don't I don't really like it, but it's why the way of the master that evangelism technique is yeah. all about showing people that they're not okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like a little bit like that's stepping into the role of the Holy Spirit. Like I want to show you what a wicked sinner you are. Instead of showing them the redemption story of the Jesus. gospel and then let the spirit do his work. Yeah, in them. yeah. true. So yeah, if, yeah. if we as preachers, instead of trying to shame people, and maybe this will give me some insight. And like, you know, you mentioned like, I used to look at people and they're like, man, they don't go to church very often. They must not be very good. Instead of trying to make them feel sorrow over something I think they should feel sorrow mm. for, for, maybe my only job is just to show people Jesus. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit will take the things in them that don't look like Christ and will move them that Ooh. way. And, and, like yeah, he's yeah. showing me that way. Yeah, you, yeah. Show them, you show them what what they what it could be like yeah, who absolutely. Jesus is and who yeah. we are and yeah. on a goal which is funny because that's the language of New Testament writers use fixing my eyes on Jesus right yeah. uh, I run as a runner with my right. goals with my heart and eyes set on Jesus fixing my eyes on Jesus right mm-hmm. so it's there's never a I'm looking back at who I was and seeing the progress right yeah in fact I can't I, I Ooh, can't think yeah. of it ever as a time of that's like an encouragement thing like I am sure we get that well, in like fitness Paul, Paul says that exact he says it the opposite right in Philippians 3 yeah after he's been boasting about all this stuff he says I consider all that rubbish for mm-hmm. the surpassing that's greatness true. of knowing mm-hmm. Christ so he's not even keeping track of the good things he did that's true yeah he, he's going man all of it's rubbish compared to knowing just Jesus just want to know Jesus just yeah. want to know Jesus yeah and and so I think that at some point, which is probably why Paul says, uh, you know, Christ came to save sinners of whom I'm the worst. I'm the mm-hmm. chief sinner. Like there, there's a sense of sorrow about the things in our lives that don't look like Christ. And yeah. that can't happen apart from the spirit in us because right. the spirit in us desires to make us like Jesus. And Absolutely. maybe the, the idea here is that it seems like it's possible for us to uh, taint or filter or veil for whatever word you want to use yep. or the work of the spirit yeah grieve grieve the yep. work of the spirit in us by either a comparison mm-hmm. or standards that aren't there like i think there's maybe what i say is i, I think it's possible to tune out mm-hmm. to some yeah. degree mm-hmm. the voice of the spirit mm-hmm. in, in conviction and moving us forward mm-hmm. um by some weird standard and i think that maybe is is the probably the case for a lot of people mm-hmm. yeah is like we're, we're tuning them out yeah well I, again I, I do think that some of this comes down to practice like yeah mm-hmm. um the next time you're somewhere micah and god lays on your heart to give somebody a case of water you're not going to miss it I, you know what i mean i think that yeah but i don't like 
I think that's the, probably the well, case because I'm aware of it now. But the, like, my hope is that I'm moving forward. That's what at, I'm saying. At, yeah, the very, yeah, yeah. at the very least, you're going to be less likely to miss that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that I, I think that the Bible does talk about that discipline being trained by discipline, and God yep. like, trains us. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm hesitating is because it happened again, oh, but great. in a more awkward situation. Two cases of water, and yep, two it. cases, and it was a situation where like it wasn't as clear cut or as easy to do as just walking up and giving someone a case of water. Gotcha. It was a situation. It was an in the middle of a round of a professional disc golf tournament and somebody, I was caddying for a friend of mine and the guy in the cart in front of us, we walked up on the tee box. They hadn't teed off yet. So we're all in the same area and he got a phone call and just crumbled. Oh mm. man. And like, I'm assuming somebody died and he's like, mm. he walks away for a second and is just like crumbled in a ball on the ground. One of the guys around him was like putting his hand on him. And I knew in that moment I was supposed to go over you there. You just step in. But like, I'm I'm reasoning in my head, like this dude's yeah. playing for his professional game of disc golf. I don't know him personally. Yep. He has no idea who I am. I'm like rationalizing in my head of why yeah. this doesn't make sense to happen. And so what I, the reason I'm hesitating is it happened again and I didn't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's, it's it's the process, and maybe hopefully that's encouraging for for you guys, mm-hmm. everybody yeah, listening. Is that like ball. I know that that even where we're at, I feel like in our walk, where we feel like we've, I feel like I've grown pastors. a ton, yeah. pastors, yeah. and I'm still acknowledging, man, there, here's, here's, there's, I'm still not there. Like I'm still having to learn to listen to the voice. What I, you know what I love though, is it's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's not Absolutely. giving up on you yeah. because he's still, the Holy Spirit, that's what's beautiful about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit's job to conform us into the likeness of Christ. Mm-hmm. He does that diligently. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's, he doesn't quit on his job as often, like ever. Like yeah. we quit on our jobs, but he does not quit on <laughs> us, you know? And and so I don't know what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it means to put out the Holy Spirit's fire. I know that there are a lot of things I want to guess that it could mean, but Paul yeah. just doesn't tell us, right? Yeah. So I don't yeah. want to speculate because I think at least in this context, that would be too dangerous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but the Holy Spirit does his work. Yeah. He yeah. does. And and so, uh, and so and the thing about it, is that God kept sending the prophets to the rebellious people of Israel <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And we are better off than Israel because mm-hmm. we are believers and we yeah. have been sealed with the spirit of God. He doesn't and we, come and go. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he doesn't. Yeah. And and so if he's going to keep sending prophets to people who straight up are worshiping idols. Yeah. Who, who, and we can talk later about some of you are going to go, well, I'm an idol worshiper too. No, you're not. Yeah, okay. Stop. You're not. I mean, <laughs> if you're bowing down to a piece of stone, wood or metal and you're giving it food and you're offering it, your okay, then we can talk. That's but true. Like, you did need that clarification in case somebody is out there like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> no, I was actually bowing down. <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. But uh, otherwise, like you're not an idol worshiper and you're what like. What you I'm, mean is like if, if, if you're gone for sports a lot, you're not making sports an idol. Yeah. Or playing like, PlayStation we can, we or something like that. We should talk about idolatry in a podcast at some okay. point because simpler I really think, view of idolatry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, I mean, if, if that's the effort and the energy God's going to put into Israel mm-hmm. who for the most part weren't redeemed, yeah. then why, why do we think that the Holy Spirit's going to quit whispering in our ear and yeah. tugging at our hearts and drawing yeah. us into the likeness of Christ? Yeah. Uh, I, I do think and maybe this is wrong because, again, we're talking about practical worldly experience versus who God is and God can do whatever the heck he wants to do. But mm-hmm. I do think that the more we practice something, the easier it is to do. And the more we resist something, the harder it is to do. I, I, mm-hmm. I just like in anything. Like, I mean, uh, if I haven't, I haven't been running as much lately, uh, just my schedule. And then we were out of town for a few weeks. Center. I know. <laughs> and And so it would be really difficult for me today to go do a six mile run. Mm-hmm. Like I would, I would end up walking the last two miles of it. Um, God, that's but, impressive. <laughs> but if I'm, if I'm running three or four times a week, like I had been earlier in the year, then it's not as difficult. And I, I do yeah, think I that the more we know the scripture, the more we surround ourselves with godly people, uh, by the way, and we've said this kind of stuff a lot. If you're wondering if it's the voice of the spirit, it, Talk to your friends who know and love God. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk to people right. who know the scripture and right. say, hey, look, is it, you think this is from God or is this just me? Like, mm-hmm. like don't do this by yourself. But yeah. there will be moments like I wasn't with Micah when he was on the disc golf course. And like, it, it, there w- the, more we, the more we train ourselves to hear that this is the spirit and the more we train ourselves to be immediately obedient, I do think that becomes easier to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Because, I, 
And I don't know, I don't know what you're thinking. I know what I would be thinking in that moment. I would be thinking, man, I am a dork and I am a weirdo. And why are they going to want me to <laughs> come up funny. to him? You know, like that death was not my thought. I know, but like <laughs> for whatever my, hesi- whatever your hesitation was and my hesitation, they'd be different, but they'd yeah, still yeah. be, they're so hesitation. Hesitations. That's your point. Yeah. 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 Sweet conviction. Um, yeah, I, we didn't talk about like necessarily a simpler view of that, but I think that um, if, oh yeah, I got one. Okay, simpler view is that the Holy Spirit is moving us mm-hmm. towards Christ likeness. Yeah, simpler view. So I think just knowing that, yeah, simpler know, view is yeah. like I know that the Spirit's working in me mm-hmm. yeah. to move me towards Christ likeness. And if yeah. it's condemnation, and if it's death, and if it's yeah. judgment, it's not the that's Spirit. That's not the Spirit. Absolutely. Well, and and even I think that you can even be and well, give me your thoughts on this. I thought this nope. a minute ago. Um, I think that the Holy Spirit can be at work and that it, it's sometimes tempting to be like, oh, I'm stronger than this. I'm better than this. And mm-hmm. to make it something that could be condemning instead of just acknowledging like, no, this is the Holy Spirit urging Wait, me towards. What do you mean? Like, um, like for instance, you, was was your response to to not going over to that guy at the disc golf course, are you beating yourself up and living in guilt right now? Oh, I see what you're saying. No. Uh, no, yeah. I, I think it's a... <sighs> It's more of a an awareness that also let me just say what I think it is for me. I mm-hmm. don't think this applies across the board because I feel like my what God's doing through me is probably different in this scenario. For example, I mm-hmm. like I was with another believer and that believer mm-hmm. had no inclination yeah, to go yeah. over. I think for me, I think God is is using me very specifically in the disc golf world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this was was one of the ways he's wanting to use me in the disc golf world. Yeah. And, and I was not allowing the spirit to use me in that way. I think that it was, well, well Ryan, I don't think it was any concern of like, what is this guy going to think about me? Right. I think it was more of a concern in terms of like, like it wasn't technically like okay to go interrupt someone that I don't know in the middle of their disc golf round. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, why in my mind I rationalize that as as if this guy would have any concern for his disc golf round. Right. Because if you watched moment. him play the rest of the round, he actually finished the round, but mm-hmm. he would like throw really bad shots and then just crumble to the ground again. So he, Yeah, his he, mind wasn't mm-hmm. there. He, so yeah. Yeah, there was no sense where he would have been like, Why did you interrupt my tournament? Yeah, right, um yeah. for whatever reason, I think I I was I think this was God moving me forward where I don't view my role in disc golf as someone that is just abide, there to abide by the uh, cordial rules of how you interact with pro disc golfers, but mm-hmm. rather to be a pastor for, for disc, disc golf, golf players, yeah. including yeah. people who, who including people who don't even know that they, that God's going to use me in their life right. in that mm-hmm. way. So I think it's not, I don't, I'm not beating myself up over it at all. I think it's, it's an, it's more Learning. of an awareness it's a godly of like grief. where I'm moving forward. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think there was, yeah. I think there is something like sorrowful in my heart sure. over it, it, but it's not like a, I don't feel to answer your question. I don't feel like I'm less of a person or I'm not yeah. actually it's doing not a good or, job. You or you're not, yeah, uh, bringing about death. In yeah, you. no, and that's but what it's doing is shaping how you're going to view those things in the future. Absolutely, it's moving you to the light. It's a of forward progression, right. actually Christ likeness. Yeah, I've actually shared that with some of the pro disc golfers. Yeah, mm. and I think I think it's something that God's using in their life too to make them realize that's cool. like they're not actually there to play. Like right. ultimately to play pro disc golf, it's yeah. there for the gospel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's yeah, that, that's that's what I meant by that is like don't if the if the Holy Spirit's at work within you it may be tempting. And I could be talking about a very, very small amount of people, but it may be tempting for you to be like, oh, I'm past this. I'm past this. Well, I mean, kind of what we brought up oh. earlier, like, no, I'm better than this. I do right. this, 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 I this, and this in my saying. life. Like, like I, go, I'm better than this. I should have done better. Dang it. This happened a few years ago with the water. Yeah. And now this happened again. Why am I not better? And now you're making it's, it about guilt right, and right, you're, right. you're condemning yourself instead of saying, mm-hmm. oh, thank you for, I mean, like, I wish, maybe you wish you had done that, handled this differently, but I'm going to take advantage of the moment. Yeah, I think there, the I think there is grief. Like, yeah. I feel, I feel sorrowful that, like, I feel something in my heart that, that isn't like a good thing about the situation. Can we, mm-hmm. can we start, can we start bringing back the Hebrew language and, and say bowels and kidneys instead of heart? Instead of your heart, yeah. yeah. I feel it in my bowels. Yeah, <laughs> it is really, well, I'm, I'm broken bowels. I feel, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's funny. It's like, for me, I actually feel <laughs> broken bowels. Instead of broken hearted. Dude, I have that problem a lot since my <laughs> yeah, gallbladder has been right. out. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, sorry. Yeah. Simple reviews. Yeah. I think that, that that's the Holy Spirit moving us towards Christ. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and encourage yourself in the midst of that, that, 
the goal, the aim is Christ and that the Holy Spirit's not going to be working and moving within you um, without Christ having already, without you being a child of God, I mm-hmm. guess is the best way to say that, without you, yeah. without you belonging to Christ. And so for the Holy Spirit to push you and guide you, um, that goal is higher and it's not to belittle, it's to, to with a higher aim in the midst of that. So yeah, right. absolutely. Um, sweet. Man, you guys don't have anything else to add to that? Well, you know who adds a lot to my life? That's, oh, that's Stephen. Stephen. <laughs> We're at the Garden Audio as always. Go give them a follow on Instagram. Well, him a follow on on, on Instagram. Go see what he's got it's going on. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. <laughs> at, at the Garden Audio. That's funny. <laughs> while, while you're over there, follow at SimplerPod. Uh, shoot us a message. Shoot us your, shoot us your thoughts. Um, um, are you walking through any level of conviction right now? Like, is the Holy Spirit at work in your life? What was your response to that? Or was there, is there, is there a story that you have um, where where the Holy Spirit has shaped you and pushed you towards Christ's likeness where that was, you felt that conviction and what did that look like for you? Um, we're interested in that for sure. And we want to, if you're in the midst of that, encourage you in the midst of that and point you um, to the truth that this is the Holy Spirit at work within you um, because his goal and his aim is to see um, that Christ likeness in you so that the gospel is proclaimed and that Christ is glorified here on this earth. Um, yeah. Uh, wherever you are, subscribe, follow. We love that we can get to talk to you guys through this means of a podcast that we can expand this simpler community as always keep Christ's core. What could be simpler than that? We'll catch you guys next week. See ya. <laughs>